Hey math students, how you doing? Today we're going to talk about simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion is, well it's a type of motion, it's a type of phenomenon in, in, the, uh, in the real world that can be modeled by one of these guys, okay? A sine wave or a cosine wave. And uh, well here, let me give you, let me show you an example of simple harmonic motion, okay? Here we see a, uh, you see a circle with a point going around the circle, and then next to the circle you see this ball with some trails behind it bouncing up and down and up and down. Kind of mesmerizing, isn't it? Um, so the ball on the right is a good example of simple harmonic motion. It's something that is going up and down and up and down, and it's making this smooth movement that basically is just as high. If you notice the ball on the, the dot on the circle and that ball uh, that are going up and down, they are always the exact same altitude. So what that means is we can use trigonometric functions, in this case it would be a sine function uh, because it's the y coordinate, to model uh, where, that, uh, where that ball is. Okay, so let's uh, get away from this thing and let's come back to reality. Uh, and uh, so now what I want to do is I want to look at, uh, let's, let's look at some, some real life problems. Okay, let's look at some applications. And here's our first one. First one says, let's take a look at the slide here. Uh, a buoy is floating just offshore and it bobs up and down from the waves. It moves a total of five inches from its low point to its high point and returns to the low point every four seconds. So we want to write an equation to model the vertical motion of the buoy assuming it starts from the low point, and we want to know how far is the buoy from its low point after 7 seconds, and how far is the buoy from its low point after 9.8 seconds. So, what do we do? Well, we use our function here, okay? Uh, now, we're starting from the low point, so let's put our y-axis right there. And if we're starting from the low point, that means we have ourselves a negative cosine function, because negative cosines start from the low point. And, uh, and since the, the questions are asking us how far is the buoy from its low point after 7 seconds, from its low point after the 9 seconds, it seems like the low point is sort of the point of reference. So let's call that uh, 0, 0. All right? And it moves a total of 5 inches from low to high, so this is going to be something 5 and it goes through one cycle. It said uh, returns to the low point every four seconds. So this down here is going to be, oh, it's a terrible wave. Uh, so that down there is going to be um, four seconds. So this will be four zero. All right, we got this. We got this easily. If this is zero and if this is four, that's got to be right in between. That's going to be two, okay? and my midline is going to go across here and uh, I can already tell uh, that between 0 and 5 this is going to be uh, 2.5 that's right in between 0 and 5 and between 0 and 2 is going to be 1 so that goes to the point 1, 2.5 we're getting a lot of answers here so now we can come up with our uh, with our equation so number 1 asked what the equation is we're going to say y equals Okay, um, our amplitude is 2.5, but it's a negative cosine, so let me write negative 2.5 times the cosine of... My period is 4, so the period is 4, and my parameter b is, uh, is going to be 2 pi over the period, so that's 2 pi over 4, also known as pi over 2. So I'm going to put pi over 2 right here and multiply it times x. And then, lastly, this is a vertical shift. My midline is at y equals 2.5, so that's a vertical shift of 2.5. So plus 2.5. And there you go. We got it. We have our, uh, we have our equation. So now where it says, um, how far is the buoy from its low point after 7 seconds? Well, let's just plug it into the equation. We have negative 2.5 times the cosine of pi over 2 
times 7 plus 2.5. And I would grab my handy dandy calculator. I don't think I need it though. Hang on a second. Pi over 2 times 7, that's 7 pi over 2. And that's coterminal with 3 pi over 2, because if I subtract 7 pi over 2 minus 2 pi, I get 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, I know what the cosine of that is. That's 0. So this is just 0 times negative 2.5 is still 0, which is just 2.5 uh, inches. Does that make sense? Yeah, because look, this is one. This is 0 here, and then after 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, 6 seconds, 7 seconds will put me back on the midline. So yeah, that makes total sense. So it's midway between the low and the high. It's 2.5 inches above the low. And then number three was asking us after 9.8 seconds. Well, I definitely need my calculator for this. So I'm going to say negative uh, 2.5 times the cosine of pi over 2 times 9.8 plus 2.5. So I'm going to do cosine of, oh, make sure your, uh, your calculator is in radian mode because we're doing radians here. So cosine of pi over 2 times 9.8, and that gets me uh, about negative 0.95. I'm going to multiply that times negative 2.5. And I get about 2.378, and then I'm going to add 2.5 to that, and I get 4. Point, uh, let's call it 4.88. So that equals 4.88 inches uh, above the low point. Um, it's pretty high. It's almost to its very highest. And uh, actually, that makes sense because... Uh, after, let's see, after 10 seconds, I believe I would be up at the maximum again. So after 9.8 seconds, I'm going to be almost at the maximum at 4.88 inches instead of 5 inches. Okay, let's look at a new problem. This problem says, suppose that a weight attached to a coiled spring is pulled down 5 inches from its rest position and then released. If the time for one oscillation is three seconds, develop a model that predicts the displacement d of the object from its rest position after t seconds, assuming no friction. Okay, so this is a spring that is bouncing up and down, uh, kind of like the ball that we saw at the very beginning here. Okay, so, um, and then uh, we're going we're gonna to use that, that model to predict uh, after four seconds, where's the weight in relation to its rest position? And then how long does it take for the weight to be four inches above its rest position? So that's going to be interesting. Um, so let's see. Uh, a weight attached to a coiled spring is pulled down five inches from its rest position. So that means, again, we are starting from the bottom. Okay. And uh, so again, this is a negative cosine. Uh, and the rest position, we'll call that zero. And this is, it's being pulled down negative, uh, it's being pulled down five inches, so that's a negative five. And this is gonna be something positive five, okay? So this is the point zero, negative five. Uh, and it says uh, time for one oscillation is three seconds. One oscillation is one cycle through. So this is going to be uh, 3, negative 5. So I already know that my, this is a negative cosine. My amplitude is uh, 5. My period is 3. So yeah, I can, we, we can put this together now. So it's going to be y equal. actually it's not going to be y equals. This said, Develop a model that predicts the displacement d of the object from its rest position after t seconds. So my uh, dependent variable is not going to be y. It's going to be d for displacement. 
So D is negative 5 times the cosine of my period is 3, so that means b is going to be 2 pi divided by 3. So 2 pi over 3 times, and instead of using x, I'm using t now. But you know, whether you use d or y or x or t, it's the same thing, okay? It's just, it, it stands for exactly the same thing. All right, so there's our model. d equals negative 5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times t. And now to... Uh, to do the first one, uh, it says after four seconds, where's the weight in relation to its rest position? Uh, well, okay, so that means we have d equals negative 5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times 4. And that's going to be – let me see if I can do this without a calculator again. Uh, that's going to be 8 pi over 3, and 8 pi over 3 is, uh, that is coterminal with 2 pi over 3, and the cosine of 2 pi over 3, I know what that is, that's a negative a half. So this is negative 1 half times negative 5, that's 2.5. Okay, so that tells me that after uh, 4 seconds, so we've gone through one cycle, we're at three seconds here, and then we're going to a fourth second. And after that, uh, uh, after four seconds, we are at 2.5 inches above the rest position because it's positive. Okay? All right? And uh, so for number two, uh, it says, how long does it take for the weight to be four inches above its rest position? Huh. So that means I'm not looking for D this time, I'm looking for T and D is 4. So 4 is negative 5 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times t. So let's see, I guess I would, uh, um, I'm running out of room here, aren't I? I guess I would divide by negative 5 and then I'm going to have to take the inverse cosine of that. So basically t is going to be the inverse cosine of 4 over negative 5, or negative 4 fifths, and then I'm going to have to divide by 2 pi over 3, also known as you multiply by 3 over 2 pi. That's what t is going to be. And uh, when I do that, I get that t is, uh, what's that, 2.498 times 3 over 2 pi, which comes out to be about 1.19. Okay? What does that mean? <laughs> well, uh, let's see. This was 0, 3. This is 1. Point, after 1.5 seconds, we're at our max, which means after half of that uh, 0.75 seconds, we're uh, at the uh, uh, resting position. Um, so after 1. Point, uh, 1.19 seconds, we're up here at 1.19 and 4. That's how long it takes to get 4 inches above the resting position. Okay? Let's do one more. One more, and this one is an interesting one. It's talking about the Bay of Fundy, one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, it's between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, and it has the highest tides in the world. In one 12-hour period, the water starts at mean sea level, rises to 21 feet above, drops to 21 feet below, then returns to mean sea level again. We're going to assume that the motion of the tides is simple harmonic, and we're going to find an equation that describes the height of the tide in the Bay of Fundy above mean sea level. Okay? And we're also going to assume that high tide occurs at 12 noon. That makes things easier. Okay. So, let's have, uh, this is going to be mean sea level, and so we'll call, uh, that, that'll be zero, and 12 noon will be our y-axis. So high tide is at 12 noon. So we're going to start here, go down here, and then up here again. And so this is going to be the point zero, and it goes 21 feet up, right? So zero, 21. And uh, 
Let me check my notes and make sure I'm not lying. Um, and it says that the it takes 12 hours to uh, to go through one full cycle. So this is going to be 12 and 21, and midway between zero and 12 is six. And this is low tide. This is 21 feet below mean sea level. So this will be negative 21. And uh, between zero and six, we have three. And between six and 12, we have nine. Okay. So those are our points. And of course, it just keeps on going over and over. All right. So, assuming that high tide occurs at 12 noon, what is the tide in relation to mean sea level at 3 o'clock? Well, at 3 o'clock, um, <laughs> there it is right there. So, at 3 o'clock, uh, it is mean sea level, okay? The tide is at mean sea level, okay? Well, that was easy. Where's the tide in relation to mean sea level at 5.30 p.m.? At 5.30 p.m., who? it's going to be right. It's going to be very, very low, just before 6. So what that tells me is uh, we got to come up with, a, with an equation here, okay? All right. So uh, let's use D and T again. I kind of like that. So D equals, can you see that? Yeah. So D equals, our amplitude is 21. So 21, this is starting at the maximum, so that's a cosine. I'm going to run out of room. D equals 21 times the cosine of... Okay, so my period is 12. I'm going from 0 to 12. So that means my parameter B is going to be 2 pi divided by 12. That's pi over 6 times T. And there's no vertical shift up or down. So there's our, uh, there's our equation. So, number two is asking, uh, what's the tide at 5.30? Is that right? 5.30 in the afternoon? Okay, so that means T is going to be 5.5. All right. Well, we're just going to plug it in and say, what is 21 times the cosine of uh, pi over 6 times 5.5? Uh, and grab your handy-dandy calculator. And when I did mine, I got negative 20.28 feet. So about a foot above, or actually not quite a foot, but three quarters of a foot, uh, nine inches or so, uh, above uh, the very, very lowest of, of the tides. So very, very low there. Um, okay, number two asks, where's the tide? No, that was number two, I'm sorry. Number three asks, where's the tide in relation to mean sea level at 8 p.m. Okay, so at 8 p.m., it's going to be it's going to be low tide again. This is six, seven, eight. It's going to be right on here. Okay, so I would take 21 times the cosine of. Can you all see this still? Yeah. So 21 times the cosine of pi over six times eight. I can do this without a calculator. Pi over 6 times 8, that's 8 pi over 6, that's 4 pi over 3. I know what the cosine of 4 pi over 3 is. That's negative 1 half. And so 21 times negative 1 half is negative 10 and a half feet. And sure enough, it's going to be about halfway down there. So negative 10 and a half feet. All right. Uh, number 4 asks us, where is the tide in relation to mean sea level at 10 p.m.? Okay. Uh, okay, let me get rid of these. So 10 p.m., that means I'm going to have um, 21 times the cosine of pi over 6 times 10. And again, I can do this without a calculator. Uh, pi over 6 times 10 is 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. And I know what the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is. That's positive 1 half. So this is going to be 21 times a half, which is... 10.5 feet. And sure enough, that makes sense because here we are at 9 o'clock and at 10 o'clock, it's going to be about halfway up there. All right. Last one says, what time is the first time that the tide is exactly 8 feet above mean sea level? Okay. 
Um, here's 21 feet. So eight feet's gonna be like right here. So it's gonna be slightly before three o'clock. Uh, let's figure it out. So this time we know the displacement. So this time we know eight equals 21 times the cosine of pi over six times t. Well, that means we'll just divide both sides by 21, and then we're gonna have to take the inverse cosine. So pi over six times t equals the inverse cosine of eight over 21. And so that means t equals the inverse cosine of eight over 21, which is approximately 1.18. And we're gonna multiply that times pi, not times pi over six, times six over pi, because we're dividing by pi over six. And that's gonna get us approximately 2.25, okay? So, uh, oops, I don't know if y'all can see that. Uh, it says t equals 1.18 times 6 over pi, which equals 2.25. Now, uh, 2.25, that's 2 and a quarter, and that means this is at 2.15. So if you're wondering, when is the tide going to be exactly 8 feet over, uh, over uh, the mean sea level? It's going to be about 2.15. So head out there around 2.15, and that's what you'll see. Okay? Hope this has helped. Uh, this is simple harmonic motion and how we use that to model real-life events. I'll see you all at the next video. Bye-bye.